Hey everyone, Merix here, bringing you another video. This one is going to be on EO Sky from Damage Control. EO is this weekend's uh, superstar, and she will be available in the Flash Feud contest. She is a modern era chaotic acrobat. Um, she's got the raw link, any color move, start with one more move point. Damage control link, blue move, start with eight more MP. Modern era, gems do 5% more damage. Stock damage control gear, she is a very good trainer. At uh, six star, black moves that deal damage will deal 100% more damage, and they start with two more MP. This will be extremely good for DX Triple H, Striker Shayna, Carrion Cross, maybe Stay Puff. I don't remember how big his black move damage was, uh, but those are just right off the top of my head, some really good ones. Uh, I'm going to have four move sets for you guys. I could run a fifth. It's kind of slowish for me. A lot of people, I think, thought it was going to be good. I don't like it. I'm sure another uh, content creator will probably run that one. Um, I didn't care for it. Uh, of note, La Familia for... This preview, whenever you break three or more blue gems, gain three green MP. This will help for two move sets. It's not necessarily needed, though. There'll be some other options if you don't have that. So NBD, um, as they say in the vernacular, no big deal. Um, nothing super crazy, 111% gem damage. Uh, you can certainly get much higher. You can see there. Um, so kind of trying to keep it low-key for five-star gold here, not go too crazy. We're going to go against 5-star gold uh, icons of WrestleMania um, Becky on the Challenge Tour. And maybe even do a 6-star match or two. Um, at 6-star, speaking of that, the Tiger Faint Kick does right around 40k bonus damage for every trap gem. I would run that move with the Victory Roll Stomp and the Trap move. And start with my um, Purple MP um, and um, Dakota Kai for sure. And that would be really powerful, especially if you have Acro Steamboat, who I don't. Uh, that looks really good at 6-star to me. Quite good. Um, but we're going to start off with um, this move set here. Uh, if I put the right one in. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I'll get to it in a minute. Never mind. Uh, Diving Moon Cell Finisher. Deal 100k damage and force your opponent to skip their turn for two turns. I want to say I feel like this is the trap move. A lot of people are going to be like, ooh, skip turn two turns. It's low damage. It doesn't do anything else. I actually don't care for this move at all. I feel like there's better options. Uh, you know, you may disagree. That's fine. Springboard Moon Salt. 6 MP. Deal 84k damage and choose a 5x5 area to make into trap gems. Broken by yield. Deal 32k damage. Increase your purple MB MP by 2. Broken by your opponent, make two random blue gems into multiply gems of strength eight. If this was any color gem, this would be incredible. Uh, so probably why it's not, because she would be totally busted and insane. Uh, with it being specifically blue gems, it tends to not work as well as I would like. Really, what I like about this is the damage per trap and getting your purple MP back. And the butterfly black whoa butterfly backbreaker 3 mp purple 60k damage she's a 4x2 area to swap into blue gems entourage woods for uh four purple mp um so that'll get us started cena at 16k if you didn't know it's a triple thing receive 40 percent less damage from blue yellow gems do 35 percent more damage and what you don't see this is 16k uh chain gain cena is the blue gems are doing 45 percent more damage which is quite large. Uh, then we're running Snoop for 20% more blue gem damage, and then um, Steph to reduce a random or all color MP by one. This is so in feud, hopefully you don't get smacked turn one. You could do color specific and target certain people. Um, so yeah, also a uh, new update is here. This is what it looks like. Your pre-match screen, you can see all of this information at a glance, really like that. If they have a promoter uh, equipped, that sort of thing. I would like to be able to um, to see specifically what trainers are equipped on this screen. That would be much nicer uh, if there was a spot for trainer somewhere. However, this is a really nice change, quality of life, and a good start because you can at least say the skill plate. But I'd also really like to be able to see the trainers. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Um, maybe there's room over here for trainers, so maybe that's going to come at a later date. But it's a nice start. All right, let's get in here, take a look, see what this one looks like. Um, the move sh sets should get better as we go on, so if you don't like this first one, that's okay. They should get progressively better as we go. We're going to run 1.25 speed. 
So all of this is uh, charged to start. Throw your traps out. Um, for this, we're going to almost for sure cause a pin every time. Uh, there is a world where we might get lucky, but it's me, so let's not bank on that, right? Um, at all. I don't... You can break them now. Uh, two of them, that's probably the right way to go. Um, this is 8, 9, 10 gems. If we don't cascade, we're good. We're going to break two uh, traps, refill our moves. Might be one short, actually, but yeah, one short. We're going to cascade anyway, so like I said, I'm not super worried about it. So there you can see the multiply gems go out. Um, the stun is filled, though, now, so now we're just stunning. Uh, turn and burn stun every time. Want to keep a lot of the traps on the board, if possible. Um, we do have three, but you can see where the multiply gems going on blue isn't as good as it sounds. Also, the trap move is going to overwrite those as you put them out. Since it's 5x5, five five, we would overwrite this one. So now you're at the point where, hey, do we want to put more trap gems out and destroy those and cover up one of these? Or do we want to take the multiply gem? You know what I mean? So, like, you can see what happens. Now we lose that 8 times multiply um, for our move. So it's, you're kind of, it, it doesn't work as well as you would think, basically is what I'm getting at. It hits decently hard, um, but again, there's only so many blue gems, right? And they get spread out. Um, looks like we're going to win. I mean, looks great. There's the stun, uh, MP down. It's not bad at five star gold for sure. All right, next move set. This is interesting because this mechanic, at uh, first I was like, uh, what the heck? Why do I want to freeze my green gems? It wasn't like readily apparent to me, um, how beneficial that would be. Um, but it actually is quite good. And you'll see, you'll see what I mean here. And then we might need to make one adjustment to this move set. Uh, we do, because this one is going to need Santa Hogan uh, to start in feud. And I don't didn't take a screenshot of that with him on there. So we will need Santa Hogan on. That'll be the difference. Uh, we're keeping the trap move. German suplex, 3 MP, deal 97k damage, freeze all green gems. Victory roll stomp, 3 MP, deal 89k damage. You make the whole board into blue uh, gems. It says swap a random area because at lower levels it's smaller. It starts lower and grows bigger. So that's why it says random. Um, this does need Santa Hogan. So he will be the one change we make uh, to get the greens loaded. Um... Should have had that on the screen and didn't mess that one up. Oh, Wells. All right. This one, you're basically uh, overriding all your traps. That's the whole goal um, with this one. Um, of course, we have La Famila on, which will automatically recharge our moves. However, you're going to see you don't actually need it most of the time. As I get aboard with one green gem, I may run this one twice. Uh, cause that's kind of silly that it was there. Only one, I mean, like, the odds of that are so astronomically small. But of course, it's a Merrick's preview. But I'll probably run this one twice, um, so you can see what it does. So I ran this moveset a ton of times and never saw that once. Anyway, watch the damage, uh, because we're getting all the damage as we blow up these trap gems. And then we're turning the board blue with a lot of blue gem damage trainers. So you can see that did 2.45 million damage. Not too shabby, right? All right, I'm gonna bump it to two times speed and run it one more time so you can see why you're not, you almost always, you're never gonna need the La Famila. It's just a Merrick's preview, so, you know, that's bound to happen, and this is how I feel about that. So we're going to get in here one more time and show the intention of the freeze gem, which is actually a really neat mechanic. Uh, to be honest. It's 
so here we have four. Again, not a lot, but you're going to see those green gems are at what ends up staying. Um, so usually you're going to get a match. Of course, it's me, so I don't manage to do that in a preview, even though before the preview I never had a time when it didn't hit. <laughs> and I probably ran it like at least 15 times because I'm like, oh, this is really neat. Uh, whatever. It is what it is. Moving on. And just one more time. Yeah, that's how I feel about that. All right, so the buff move. This is tricolor move set. Um, it's pretty interesting to me. We're gonna add the buff in. Um, there's a better move set than this. A lot of people are like, "Ooh, buff! It should be really great with this buff move." It only lasts for one turn and it's seven MP. Kind of the downside to me um, that it's seven MP. Um, we're bringing the uh, oh, trap move back. Da -da -da -da. And then. Um, so Meteor is the one you haven't seen, 7 MP blue, deal 96k damage, increase your blue gem damage 60% one turn. Uh, entourage for this one, um, we need double MP uh, trainer. So we need the Woods and the Lawler. That gets everything loaded with Santa. All moves are charged right away. Um, La Familia is certainly beneficial on this one as we're not freezing anything. Um, if you need more than one turn at five star gold, you certainly are not going to need more than one turn. Um, this is why we're going to take it against um, a six star as well. I will turn it to 1.25 for the meteor and then crank it back up to two. Buff move. It's really simple. It doesn't matter where you put anything here. 60%. Now keep in mind, Cena is 45%. So this buff is only 15% bigger than Cena, and it only lasts one turn. Traps go out, and then we're going to hit this. Um, so we're not getting a very big gain over Cena, so I don't know that we're going to hit much harder. We'll see. Technically, I already know the answer, but you don't, so, you know. You see everything recycled, 2.8 million damage. Uh... Not bad, right? Certainly not bad at all at 5-star gold. The trap damage, if you're wondering, scales up to 50k um, from the 33k at that. Uh, so it does scale up a little bit. All right, let's run it. Uh, now we're going to go against 6-star opponent for the, this, this one more time. And then the last one. So you can see uh, what this is going to look like. Uh, potentially. Obviously, it's going to hit much harder at 6-star, right? And I believe I forgot to... Did I turn it to 1.25? I don't know. That was over so fast. We'll find out in a second. I did. So we can move it back up to 2 now. Buff move. Trap. Come on. Boom. Full board blue. Two point five mil, of course, six star kicks right out, right? <clears throat> so if the buff was more than one turn, you know that would be really nice. We'd get an additional sixty percent. You're gonna see why I like the next move set more, and why I feel like it's gonna be much better overall um, when we get to it. But I'm glad we have a six star to use this against. Nice little cascade, 2.8 mil. Win on turn two there against a six star at five star gold. Actually pretty dang good, right? Um, now the last one. This one to me is really, really interesting uh, because you only need one MP trainer and you don't need Santa Hogan. So we're going to have Cena, which makes up for the buff, and then some. And then Hall of Fame, well, it doesn't, but Cena and Hall of Fame China is actually 5% bigger than the buff. Um, and you don't need Santa Hogan. And you can drain them. So to me, this seems like the winner. Plus, <clears throat> potentially, um, and granted, you wouldn't have the guaranteed recycle of the green, 
if you if we ever get a skill plate that buffs uh, blue and red off of the sub, um, buffing blue gems, that would be uh, in the game here or available. But you're going to see one other thing. We have a chance to get multiply gems on the board, uh, which I haven't really shown as being super beneficial. So this move set is that. Um, so this is the move we haven't seen. 6 MP blue sub, color submission, choose 7 gems, make into purple. 75k damage, 3 turns. Remaining turn into pyro gems. Modify all gems above it into blue. Really don't care about that. We're using this to load all the moves. Um, is the whole point of this. And let's get my loadout here that I have saved. Alright. That's the whole point of that, is it buffs or loads the purple. And the green will be loaded naturally. Um, so yeah. I think you could also do um, Glowing Phantom plate, if I'm not mistaken. If that is purple to green, if you don't have La Famila, and we'll check after this, you could absolutely use Glowing Phantom uh, to load this without needing to use a La Famila. And Glowing Phantom is on the, the prize wall, so we will certainly check that. Um, so you just need a few purples to load everything, uh, whatever. We And then you're just, you know, you're draining after that. So, what a, da, 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 da. sure. So that gets your opponent all nice and drained. It fills your purple, fills your green. Um, of course, we're going to fill our blue. Uh, I don't particularly care about the pyros, like I said. Um, so, yeah. But what's interesting now is now you have options because now we can get the multiply gems on the board this second cycle potentially so maybe they do something for us you know let's see what let's see what that ends up looking like with the sub uh and then blowing up the board we do again so also that keep in mind the trap gems when we break them refill the purples so uh let's say you have a glowing phantom you could just match these three and you're totally filling everything and assuming the glowing phantom does what i think it does and i'm not mixing that up which is entirely possible uh this would refill all of your moves without the la Famila. All right now we're getting some of those multiply gems on the board times eight a lot of them actually um now the thing is though we lose the trap gem damage but each one of those is 200k where each of the traps is 33k. So that's basically seven trap gems. One, two, three, four, five. That's 35 trap gems. And the most we could get is uh, five, plus we still have some on the board. So by that quick math, this is way better damage. Not super impressive at 2.68, but we drain. And that was another second cycle win. Uh, basically two cycles of it, right? Um, so, yeah. No Santa needed. Let's check that glowing phantom situation because then literally, to me, the best moveset, uh, at least prior to six star, and maybe even after six star, is 100% uh, free to play if glowing phantom works. Indeed, it is purple to green. So this one, you would 100% use the purple to green uh, to load this. Fantastic. Uh, actually, this is much, much better than I thought, especially for the fact it can use Glowing Phantom. Um, initially, I was pretty cold on EO other than her trainer, and I just wasn't feeling it. But this moveset, and this is a 5-star gold against a 6-star. I'm going to run it one more time because I think it's worth showing. Um, she's really dang good. And to me, like I said, the stun is the trap. I don't, I'm not that impressed by the stun. Um, this moveset, however, does impress me. Um, and I think it's quite good. Um, Speed-wise, seems to be solid enough. Um, well, maybe it doesn't set the world on fire uh, completely. It's certainly not bad, and it seems, other than like an escape artist plate, uh, it's going to be pretty tough to lose against, right? 
Especially that second cycle around, you get some multiply gems, can have some fun with that potentially. Um, this first cycle is still going to hit really hard with the trap gems. Really actually like the design. There's a lot of different stuff here. Initially, I'm like, she's weird. I don't like her. But yeah, I played it more. And the fact that you can use a glowing phantom, you can have this move set. Um, and completely have it work, being uh, free to play is really nifty to me. I think that's great. I see the five match there. I don't particularly care. Again, Glowing Phantom would make this all go uh, swimmingly, as it were. And I want to save some trap gems, too. Because I want to get those blue multiplies on the board, if possible. Like that. Hmm. Don't do the real break. Okay, good. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see how hard this one hits. Nice. Three mil. At five star gold. She did kick out there at 6 star, but this is going to end up being a full drain. And she's got some low charge moves, so she got that one loaded. Not the end of the world. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty dang impressed by EO, to be honest. And that's without her 6 star move, which looks to be really good. Um, but this fact that you have the drain here protecting you in case you don't win turn 1, to me, is actually pretty big. I'm a big, big fan of that. And we can just finish without the sub here. Um, because it's over. Becky just doesn't know it yet. So really the question becomes, what do you have on your roster? Where, who are you taking? Right? Let's take a look at the Lady Acrobats. Um, keep in mind her trainer at 6 star. So we'll take a look at my roster. Where does she fit? So I don't I have I have Liv. I haven't taken her six star yet. Obviously Bailey's gonna be incredible for Liv. I plan on taking Liv six star. Uh, maybe next week. But let's take a look at my roster here and see where we're at in comparison on the Lady Acros. So Liv and Bianca are gonna be the big ones, right? Um Pyro Bliss, I don't think is a big deal. To be honest, she's just rare. So the question is, how does EO fit compared to these two? If you don't have Bianca's gear, I think she's certainly better than Bianca with that last build set, right? Bianca stuns, anti-stun slows you down, uh, escape artist slows EO down, kind of a wash. Um, but the multiply gems on her are not very big. You need a blue match to keep it going. So I would give the nod to EO head to head. Showdown wise, it's not, I mean, for feud, right? Showdown wise, it's not even close because you have the link of the uh, tag team. This is, again, Bianca no gear, keep in mind. Trainer wise, it's a slam dunk EO. So EO wins on every front against Bianca without gear. Bianca with gear, however, is ridiculous. And then you throw everything I just said out the window. But I don't have the gear. All right. Liv. Liv is interesting. Let's check out Liv's coach. Basically worthless, for all intents and purposes. Uh, she is great in Showdown and doesn't need a link for it. She is great in Feud. Liv is very random. You have no control over it. She does hit really hard, especially if you get Bailey. I think at that point, it becomes a preference between uh, Liv and Eo. Like, I tend... When I play against Liv, the AI plays are amazing, and she almost never cascades. And it's not fun, All right, right? When I play Liv, I cascade all the time. Bailey will help that because you're going to start with the big move damage and rolling the pin bar. Um, you can, you don't need La Familia, so you know, not necessarily anything incredibly paywalled to run Liv well. You do need a or want a metal in the 200% variety, right? For sure. That'll make a huge difference. Bailey will make a huge difference. So I think, you know, given those two things, 
I actually put her really close to Liv because of the fact that she'll be able to show down with that particular damage control link. However, Liv doesn't need a link at all. Um, and Liv is just a pain to go against defensively, where I don't know if EO will. I probably give a slight advantage to Liv, like fighter wise, and then showdown wise, I'll give her an advantage. But trainer wise, it's not even close. And I prefer to maximize all of my roster with the trainer. And uh, I have Shayna six star, I have DX Triple H six star. Um, another two MP black trainer on top of the move damage is nice. So for my roster, I'm actually taking EO to six star first if I get her. So if I don't get EO this month, then I'll probably take Liv next month to six star. If I do get EO, um, then I probably won't or I'll take them both. So that's where she fits in on my roster. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, I do want to say the one thing I didn't cover was running the sub with the trap and, or I'm sorry, without the, the, the sub trap and then this move right here, because it was really slow. And I didn't see any reason to do that when I could show the same sort of thing with tricolor. So there's that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe and share as that really helps me out. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and enjoy the trial. And let me know what you think. Good luck out there.